I think what's really cool about what we do is it's, uh, it's both the science coupled with the need. And one of my favorite quotes was from Melinda Gates, science enables our caring to matter. And you know, I love that, that view that um, we have this new tool and we can, we can change the way people live and we can improve the, you know, the human condition. And, uh, and so now all of a sudden we're talking about like amazing things because you can actually fabricate objects using light. You know, I think about a future fabricated with light. And we can make complex things that you can't make with traditional manufacturing. Uh, and, in, and the printer itself is actually pretty simple because it's like almost no moving parts. It's a window, a reservoir, light source, and a platform. And it's not a lot of commotion going on. It's just quietly growing parts. CLIP is, uh, stands for Continuous Liquid Interface Production. Oxygen maintains a liquid interface, maintains the puddle, and allows us to pull an object out of the puddle. So when a platform comes down and you have that first increment of liquid, when you shine light on it, it basically glues onto the platform like a photocurable adhesive. But because oxygen is coming through the window, it doesn't glue to the window. So it's having a small gap and it only glues to the upper surface and not the bottom surface. So when you start pulling it up, liquid comes in underneath because there's a river of resin flowing in underneath the part. There's something called Industry 4.0 that everyone's been talking about, and it's really the next generation of how people manufacture. And some of the key tenets of Industry 4.0 are things like sensors and automation and uh, robotics and data analytics and uh, artificial intelligence and all these things. But one other key piece that's missing is a digital fabrication technique, a technique that actually scales with uh, the economics necessary. And this represents the last piece of this vision of how to revolutionize manufacturing that's data-centric. So all of a sudden, high-strength, lightweight products that out of amazing materials to have a better running shoe, to have more fuel-efficient cars, uh, to make parts out of one part that may have been assembly of six parts or eight parts. And now all of a sudden, all of a sudden things become cheaper you don't have expensive tooling costs. And all of a sudden, now you're making things you know, much better in a data-centric way uh, that open up entire new businesses and entire new business models. Think about you know, inventory. Imagine if you could have a warehouse in the cloud, on-demand production. These kinds of dramatic changes to be in line with mega trends in society for uh, more fuel efficient vehicles, less material needed uh, because the parts are hollowed out, they weigh less. This dematerialization theme is going to be a huge opportunity for us if you can use light as a chisel and make these amazing structures that wouldn't be possible with traditional manufacturing. It's hard not to get excited uh, about the running shoe. You know, this idea that you know, if you're size 9 and you weigh 100 pounds versus 180 pounds, your shoes ought to be different. Right, so we can take the biometric data uh, and flip that into a lattice that's tuned for an individual and open up mass customized products. Medical is huge, and you think you need a, you know, a tuned shoe. You ought to have a tuned stent. The interventional cardiologist looking at your blockage, you know, she could now go to a computer screen, identify where the blockage is, uh, tuned to your anatomy, and you should be able to print that stent directly on a balloon catheter designed for your, your anatomy. That's the new world that's coming. So it's a really big breakthrough in manufacturing. And so we can actually you know, change the way parts are designed, engineered, made, and delivered. And it opens up entire new markets, and we're very excited to be at the forefront of that.